We're joined by Ranjita from Jaro Education and we're going to know what her insights are about the edtech space, especially beyond K-12. Thank you so much for joining us today. So my first question to you, like I just said, uh, traditionally we've just known edtech in the K-12 sector. But what, what are your views when you look, uh, when your, your company, Jaro Education, is providing education beyond K-12? So why do you think that this sector, which is beyond K-12, is actually important for uh, edtech? Sure. Thank you. I think this question is uh, very close to my heart because I have served to a higher education edtech for about 16 years now. For us, we truly feel that uh, India and Indian working professionals has to be perpetual learners. Yeah? Now the conventional skills have been replaced by the new age skills uh, and now ChatGPT coming picture has created a lot of fuss in the minds of people as how the future of you know the jobs is going to be so for us our it's it's a cause that we're serving we feel and what we're doing is with the help of technology we're reaching out to large number of working professions besides you know larger cities as to make them employable also support them in the future skills as they are employ ready and with the help of technology we are reaching out to large amount of people and also bridging the gap between the institute and the academia and the industry so, so that's when we know that what is required for somebody to become employable, what are the new latest skills, go back to the academia and help them develop such programs and come them and offer to the working professionals. It's a very interesting point which you say ma'am because usually what we see is that academia is very, uh, un in, it's not in touch with what's happening in the industry, what the requirements of the industry are. So for example when I do a couple of news stories I see that the curriculum of a particular program is maybe has not been changed from decades and maybe the person who will go through that skills will not be employable. So it's a very fascinating thing that you do there. But there's another aspect to it. Uh, when a person goes to an institution, they don't go just for the curriculum, but also for the peer-to-peer -peer connect that they get, for the networking opportunities that are, that are there. So how can EdTech compensate for that? Because it's primarily online. I think uh, we have worked quite hard as an EdTech because our job is to also build a technology interface as to make it immersive and interactive. So what we do is we offer several different types of courses. So one is definitely which is a blended learning yeah? where we also have some component where participants can, these working professions can go have on campus feel, learn, come back and rest of the lectures they can attend online. And we've created immersive classrooms across 26 different cities for these working professionals to leverage peer-to-peer -peer learning all the peer can come together in those classrooms and have you know online delivery being taken from there that's one second we are also heavily working on uh, uh, AR and VR based learning so what it is going to make participants feel as they're in the classroom and that will make them more immersive more interactive in terms of your their delivery and understanding that's a very interesting point, ma'am, that you're trying to integrate peer-to-peer -peer in edtech despite being an online, uh, despite it being an online opportunity. I have another last question for you. Uh, what is the business opportunity when it comes to edtech? Because lately we are seeing many big companies collapse because of governance issues and other things. But what's your take? What's the business opportunity when you look at uh, someone who's a promoter of an edtech company? What What do you see? Uh, while people look at edtech from a valuation perspective i feel valuation with the social cause has to come together because even if it's an edtech and private companies we are still leveraging giving participants uh, no students learning opportunities so it's a social cause and i think all the promoters founders needs to keep this in mind a b slow steady growth is always good so we don't have to be in an era of running behind you know making just the business but also understanding it at the foundational level is how we can you know support people and I think as far as we are able to give the best opportunity to people to learn and come back, I think we don't have to be worrying about where the business is going to go. For us, we have been existing for 16 years, bootstrapped, profitable, and I think we have not faced any such challenge because we've been, we, we, we knew that it is going to be slow and steady, but we had a progressive approach always instead of just running behind valuation and make it too large for, for ourselves to deal with. Yeah? That's a very interesting point that you point out. Thank you so much, ma'am, and all the best for your future endeavors. Thank you.